This is what storm surge looks and sounds like when it takes over a home. Waves are coming through. Cliff Choke and his son made the mistake of staying in their house during Rita. Their video camera documented the destructive power of the water. There ain't much left in this house. What happened to the Chokes happened to thousands of New Orleans area families. Alvin Butler is still struggling to rebuild his flooded home in the Ninth Ward. All you got to do now is just say, Hurricane, just leave. You know, just hope for the best. Just hope that you don't get the water. If there had been buoyant foundations on these shotgun houses here uh, at the time of Katrina, when the floodwaters came, the houses would have floated. Former LSU professor Elizabeth English has taken on the Ninth Ward as her project and after the storm worked on a solution that she believes could save houses like these in another flood. Sandbags over here. English and seven LSU students worked to make a prototype of an amphibious house. They put it to the test in a large tank they built to prove it would literally float in a flood. This is a way of making that house safe from flooding without destroying the character of the neighborhood by raising the house way up above the street. It's a much cheaper solution to providing flood protection than permanent static elevation, as well as being a whole lot more convenient because if you build your house eight feet off the ground and you have a 10-foot flood, you're back where you started. The concept basically works like a floating dock. A steel frame holding flotation blocks would be attached to the bottom of old frame houses like the ones in the Ninth Ward. And there are vertical guidance posts that are attached to the house that sink down into the ground, and those telescope out of the ground, kind of like a car antenna. English's team designed this animation to show how their prototype house would float up on the water in a flood pulling the vertical guidance post out of their sleeves. The idea is not original. In fact, English expanded on some old-fashioned ingenuity that's been in use in Louisiana for decades. I heard about it from one of my LSU students whose family had built one of these. In Point Capie Parish at Rackasee on Old River, fishing camps have withstood flooding for decades. The Oxbow Lake was cut off from the Mississippi River, and whenever the Mississippi overtops its banks, Old River floods. So about 30 years ago, one of them came up with the idea of putting uh, styrofoam blocks underneath the house and four posts at the corners of the house. And that's the buoyancy blocks and the vertical guidance system. And for 30 years, every time it floods at Old River, uh, this one goes up and down. And a lot of the neighbors have followed this example. And there are dozens of these. In the Netherlands, a country one-third below sea level, residents have moved into the first development of their version of floating houses on the banks of the Maas River, southeast of Amsterdam. What they do at Maas Bommel is basically they made empty concrete boxes. It works like a bathtub, if you will, the way a bathtub would float. I think it's a great idea. Alvin Butler from the Ninth Ward is sold. Where the houses will float up still instead of from being on level ground where the water can get run into them, you know. And save, save a lot of your furniture and stuff, your clothing and all that. You know, at least you have something to come back to. So English is holding on to hope that something about this project will catch fire. She says she'll gain nothing personally because the idea is not original, but she believes in the concept. The house will go up as high as you need. For people like Alvin, who dread the thought of starting over again. Do the same thing I'm doing now, rebuilding.